Hey guys, it's Mr. Schmidt here, and in this video, we're going to start what's probably my favorite unit in the entire course, and that's called Oligopoly. So, Oligopoly is the fourth and final market structure we're going to look at in the course, and the great thing about it is there is no graph in this unit whatsoever. Instead, we're going to look at the behavior of firms in this market structure a little bit differently, actually significantly differently than we have with the others. And we'll get into that when we talk about game theory. But in this video, I just wanted to talk about the major characteristics of this market structure. So the first one is that there are few firms in the industry. In fact, sometimes uh, you'll see this term uh, duopoly. The word duo means two. So this is where if you had two firms, it's called a duopoly, so sometimes you see that. Um, they have identical or differentiated products, so they can be like perfect comp where everyone sells the exact same thing, or they can be more like monolistic competition, monopolistic, sorry, competition, where each firm is selling a slightly different product than their competitors. The third one is they have high barriers to entry, so it's very difficult to get into this type of market structure, and that's why there are such few firms in the industry. And by few, I really mean probably no more than 20 firms at most. The fourth one, like monopoly and monopolistic competition, they are a price maker. They decide their own price. If we were to graph an oligopoly, it would look very similar to a monopoly, so they're not allocatively efficient they're not going to be productively efficient. Um, you have mutually interdependent, this should say interdependent firms, so I, I apologize for the misspelling, so let me, let me spell that correctly, interdependent firms. Um, so that means each firm's success depends on both its own actions as well as those of other firms in the industry. This is the critical characteristic of this market structure, and it's one you really, really need to, to zero in on here. What this means is that if, let's say, well, the examples here are cereal and cars. So let's take the car industry. Let's say we have Ford and Honda. Ford's success as a car company doesn't just depend on what Ford does in terms of the cars and trucks and vehicles it builds, but also what its competitors are doing like Honda, as an example, okay? And you may say, well, how is that different than like monopolist competition or, you know, something like that? Well, there's such few firms here that each of those firms gets to know each other really, 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 really well. And so they're very much aware of what their uh, opponents are doing and that influences their decisions and ultimately their profits. So this is a characteristic you must, must know because actually, on a couple uh, FRQs that I've seen on oligopoly, one of the first questions they'll ask you is, how do you know that this question is about an oligopoly? And your answer will be because the firms are mutually interdependent. They recognize that their success doesn't just depend on their actions, but also the actions of the other firms in that industry. And so cereal would be an example, cars would be an example, anywhere we have very few firms. Um, software operating systems, uh, sorry, software, Good gosh, I cannot speak today. Smartphone operating system, so iOS and Android, that would be an example of a, basically a duopoly where you have two firms, Apple and Google, that control that industry. And so they're very aware of what each other are doing. And that often shows up in features that start on one um, platform and then end up on another platform. So that's all for this video on the characteristics of oligopoly. Until next time. Have a great day.